What has the investment climate been like this year and what can we look forward to in 2015? Andrew Claval, Wealth Manager at Alpha Wealth, joins us to answer some of these questions. Andrew, lovely to have you. Mm, thanks um, for having me on the show. Let's start with a reflection on uh, 2014. Uh, three of the most exciting and most significant developments that you think uh, the world paid attention to in the past year? Okay, well on the local front, we're looking at a very different environment in the last month than we were kind of if we were looking two months ago. I mean, the JSC's had a soft December. So um, I'd say the biggest, the biggest highlights are if you, were, if you were long resources, you would have had a, had a terrible year in a very much deflationary and environment. And then globally, you're looking at, uh, at a world where interest rates just haven't started to tick up. I mean, at one point this year, you had U.S. bond yields trading at um, un under 2% on the 10-year bond. So, yeah, it's been, uh, those are kind of the two things that have stood mm -hmm. out on the investment front. And um, volatility is definitely back in the market. Mm -hmm. The days of kind of buying your index trackers and watching the market rise are, are definitely over. We had a board on screen a moment ago where you highlighted two uh, South African entrepreneurs who've managed to uh, shake the environment that they're operating in. Elon Musk uh, together with Mark Shuttleworth in his case with the uh, FSB. Absolutely. So that's set a precedent now for, for investors looking to take money offshore. And the proceeds of that, the $250 million that Mark Shuttleworth was actually awarded from the South African Reserve Bank has now been put into to good use to help people who are looking to to take um, to take money offshore, they're able to utilize that for legal and professional opinions and advice. And then you've got Elon Musk, who keeps to be, who seems to be changing the world on a, a daily basis. If mm -hmm. it's his rocket right across the states or his elevator to the moon, who knows? <laughs> uh, he's uh, he's a seriously entrepreneurial guy, and, uh, South African. So yeah, um, it's Tesla, the rise of Tesla. I mean, they've got 500,000 mm -hmm. cars now that they're putting electrical power into. It's a huge stepping stone for him and uh, it's a sustainable looks looks to be a profitable and highly revenue generative mm. business so let's mm. take a look at uh, away from developments and let's take a look at one of those once-off events that uh, we are all looking forward to had the day marked on our calendars I think for me Janet Yellen uh, taking over from Ben mm. Bernanke and then of course it's been uh, fed 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 and more fed for the rest of the year since yeah correct I mean for fund managers, if you've owned the S&P 500, it's probably been the best performing fund, and that's mm -hmm. a function of your, um, your stimulus. 85 billion being injected into the market through their very expansionary monetary policy. You see someone like Janet Yellen putting 85 billion dollars in, inflating asset prices, and then when that's tapered, and then it finally pulled, as we saw last month, equity markets um, offshore actually didn't respond too badly. It shows that the U.S. really is starting to gain some good traction. And of course, the board there on screen uh, also adding two of the other issues that are so well captured in uh, the note that has been put together. A little bit about Russia and then uh, maybe a quick one on the, the oil price, Andrew? Yeah, so uh, Russia and the Crimea situation, not great for kind of global investor sentiment. And that actually links straight into the oil prices. What is at play? Who's keeping oil price low? Who's trying? Is it an American-Russian mm. uh, government type issue, or are the, are, the, are the Middle East looking to kind of have a have an impact over the the fracking that's going on in the states? So the oil is a is a little bit more complex, and is the oversupply that we're seeing justified, or is there a lack of demand coming into the market for oil? So now we see oil trading below sixty dollars a barrel. Um, from our perspective, it seems like a short-term iteration, and we do see it normalizing in 12 months to $80 a barrel. And then um, the, it seems like the worst is over on the Russian cr Crimea front. Mm -hmm. um, Putin understands now that he has to live within a global context, and, um, but on the back of that has done a very interesting oil deal with the Chinese. So it's, it's, it definitely does keep one on their toes, but... Um, it di the worst and kind of the most dramatic impact on the market, I'd say, has been um, is behind us. It's amazing how people be begin to live with these type of issues. I mean, they mm. start saying, "Well, um, yeah, we've got the r the minutes it's on the headlines daily." Mm. You kind of get complacent, yeah. and eventually, everyone's priced it in. And and it's kind of ready to move forward into the into the new year. If what you're saying is that the worst is behind us, how optimistic then is your view for 2015? 2015, there are three things in our view that's that's going to happen. First of all, the big trade that everyone was waiting for was the switch out of the U.S. Treasury, so letting those yields get higher. And but that the U.S. Treasuries have been in an absolute bull market, so we see towards the end of the next year that's starting mm -hmm. to reverse. The second thing is spike in volatility. We see the volatility index really starting to to move upwards and. 
uh, towards the mid 20s can't stay below 15 for too long and then um, the third thing is switching from your passive investment into more active non-correlated asset classes. How come though? Uh, what if you're one of those who wants to take the easy way out and you don't want to get stock specific and just put your money in any kind of index mm. fund and uh, get the let average it, performance? Let it do its work, right? Exactly. Yeah, so that's, that's great when you're trading at a multiple of 12 times, allowing the whole capital market to re-rate to the level it is today. Globally, let's work on 19 times. And um, yeah, you've had a great ride and it's been inflated through stimulus. Now stimulus is off the table, you're trading at a premium to fair value, it's no longer the time to be sitting passive, and for that reason we see non-correlated asset classes, stuff that you sacrifice liquidity to get that same outperformance. Those are our big trends for the year. So one, will the US um, interest rates uh, start going up? We see that towards the end of next year, uh, drive towards non-correlated assets as a result of increased volatility in the capital markets. Maybe a sub-trend that I'd like to get uh, your opinion on, uh, uh, Bitcoin and the uptake of Bitcoin. I learned this mm. year that there's also Bitex, which is an, ex an exchange sort of platform where you can actually trade Bitcoin. I mean, yeah. what do you think is going to be the big momentum driving uh, the acceptance of, of Bitcoin, especially because people have reservations about its safety and its utility? Yeah, so the, the ETF was actually done, launched by the Winkelhaus brothers from the Facebook movie, and um, they've built that to, to try and accommodate the investor who's actually not too astute in terms of setting up an online e uh, bit wallet and a place to store and house their bitcoins. But it's not so much bitcoin specifically that we've seen as quite a big movement in 2014, but it's more the international acceptance of these online virtual currencies and how that can potentially derail currencies as we know them today. Mm. Well, I, I'm still not a fan of it, but <laughs> uh, it will be interesting to see how the plan sets up. I'll get mm. you a bit wallet for Christmas. Oh, How's that? wow. <laughs> <laughs> that, <note. laughs> that was uh, Andrew Flavel. He's a wealth manager at Alpha Wealth.